So as soon as I sat down to film today, they started mowing the lawn like right outside my window. This happens almost every single day uh, that I sit down to film and then I end up not even putting up the videos, but today I'm gonna try to put this one up. Um, I did film a separate sort of declutter video the other day and typically I do my beauty basket and declutter videos together so then that way you can see what I'm getting out and then you can see the stuff that I'm kind of like debating on getting rid of uh, and then I'm going to use it throughout the month and all that stuff. So usually my beauty baskets aren't just stuff though that I'm debating on keeping or getting rid of. It's also like new stuff that comes in or stuff that I know that I've been neglecting that I just want to use. Whether I just want to use it because I love the product and I haven't used it in a while or because it's seasonally appropriate. Um, and I have a lot of makeup that I always say like, well, I'm going to use that when I have a tan. Um, here's the thing, my tan has already faded <laughs> from summer. I, I'm still a little bit tan, like I'm not as light as I am in the winter, but the tan on my face has already faded significantly. Um, so I feel like a lot of those darker foundations and concealers that I was holding on, like I'm able to declutter and you will see that in the declutter. So I'm first gonna skip over to everything I'm getting rid of and why I'm getting rid of it. And then we're gonna come back and we are gonna talk about the makeup that I want to try and give attention to this month. Okay, so I wanna go in order kind of by the way I put things on my face. So the first category are base products. Um, so this is gonna be foundations, concealers, correctors, powders. Um, the first thing though is this from Josie Marin, which kind of is a base product. It's a sunscreen and I'm getting rid of this because I did open it up and try it once and it leaves a terrible white cast on my skin and I have so many good sunscreens that don't do that so I'm gonna go ahead and pass that on. Um, and then I have some foundations and I think some of these may surprise you. The first one is this Kosas foundation and it's the Tinted Face Oil. Shocker, it's just too oily and it doesn't feel good on my skin. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass it on maybe while somebody else could use it. Um, this Dior foundation, it's their backstage foundation, the face and body foundation. I was thinking this is going to be more like MAC face and body. It's not. Um, this oxidizes quite a bit and it's super, I don't know, it just, it looks makeup-y on the skin. It does not look good. So I'm going to go ahead and pass that on. Um, this one from Guerlain, I spent a lot of money on this and I tried to make it work because I spent so much money on it and I just can't. It oxidizes so much. It has a weird kind of like opaque undertone. Um, and it just doesn't look good on the skin and I'm, I'll only use one pump for my whole face and it still doesn't look good. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass that on. Um, these foundations right here from... Um, who is this? Well, it's KVD now, I think, or yeah, KVD Beauty. I don't know. Either way, it's the Good Apple Foundations where everybody was talking about how great they were on TikTok. And you might see, it looks like I used quite a bit of this one, but actually last year on Halloween, I dressed up as Uncle Fester and I just used the super pale shade all over, even to like my bald cap so that I could look like Uncle Fester. This formula is not flattering on the skin. It does not look good. I've tried multiple ways to make it look good and I have two shades um, kind of so that I could mix and get them to match my skin because I thought that might make them look better. But it's just hard to mix solid foundations like this and then they didn't look good even after doing that. So I'm getting rid of those. Um, and then I have this from Kosas. This is actually pretty new. This just dries down to straight up glitter on my face. So um, I'm passing that along. I have this Say Concealer. This is shade number three, which you would think shade number three in a concealer line would not be this dark. Um, so I have some friends who are a little bit darker than me, so I'm gonna pass it on to them. And then I have this Innisfree No Sebum Mineral Pact. It's just a sort of oil blotting powder but it's very, very white um, and it leaves just a white cast on the skin. And then I have this from Nude Sticks and this is their Nudies Tinted Blur Stick. I just never reach for this. If I see it in my drawer, it's just not something that I really think to use or reach for. It doesn't really do a whole lot. It doesn't really wow me. And then this has been discontinued. It's from, oh my gosh, 
It Cosmetics. And I love this product in the shade light, but this is the shade medium and it's just too deep for me. I was able to get a little bit of use in the summer when I was at my deepest, but I'm never gonna be able to go through this whole thing. So I'm gonna pass it on to somebody a little bit deeper. So the next category are lips. And with the lip products, a lot of these are things I never even touched because they have glitter in them and I don't like glitter I already. No, I don't like the formula. Um, or I already had like multiple. So one thing is I, are these the only ones in here? Okay, a clear lip gloss. I already have a clear lip gloss that's open and typically I don't like to dip into a clear lip gloss and then go back over my lips if I have lipstick or something like that on because I feel like it sullies the clear lip gloss. Um, so I usually only do one at a time. And so I do, if I do clear lip gloss, I do have one with all of them, but these have all never been used. And I have um, this brand called Floss. I have a MAC lip glass that's clear. I have a Morphe uh, glassified lip oil. And then I also have this from Anastasia, which is a clear lip gloss. And I just figured somebody else could get more use out of those. And then at one point I bought like a four or five pack of these little bag balm uh, lip balms. I'm not gonna be able to get through all of those so I threw one of those in there to get rid of. L'Oreal recently came out with these and I don't know what possessed me but I was at Walmart and so I picked them up and then I just swatched them and I knew that these colors would not be for me so I wanna give them to somebody um, before I put them on my lips. It's hard to tell when you're buying lip stains exactly what shade they're gonna end up being. And I have a couple here that I picked up at one point at CVS. And once you open them, you can kind of see, it's like a purpley kind of toned stain. And you can kind of see once you open them how the direction they're gonna go in. And I'm just, I know I'm just not going to use these. And then this one's kind of like a nudie pink with a purple on top. And I just know, again, I'm not going to use those, so I'm going to pass them on. Um, this is also same thing. It's a lip stain. I got this online from Timu, which I will never order from the gym. Everything was like trash. But they made their stuff look like... Um, this, the Peri Para, it's the Velvet Ink 01. And this just says, oh, Ink Velvet 01. And then this says Ink Velvet 18, but it's not the same brand. They tried to make it look like it, but it's not. It's like whatever this brand is. And so as soon as I got it, I just knew I wouldn't use it. And it's like this super bright pinky orange color. So I'm gonna pass that on. And then I did some swatch in comparison because these all looked so so similar to me and I have black tea and Earl Grey tea in these and I have other shades that are similar for fall that I could use um, even this was a miss I don't know it's when I bought all that Korean stuff the thing is I have so many similar shades to these and I use them maybe once or twice a year um, so I'm gonna pass them on maybe somebody else can use them I have these Jason Wu eye lip cheek things. I used them once for a video. They were okay. I liked them, but I never reached for them again. Um, oh, another clear gloss. This is from 1999 and you can use this one on your cheeks as a highlight on your eyelids or on your lips. Um, and then this from Beauty Pie. It's their lip oils, which I really do like, but I don't know if you can see. Will it focus on it? No, nope, it's still on my face. Hold on. There we go. See all the glitter in it? Anything with glitter, typically I find irritating on my lips. I have this from Buxom. I do not like Buxom gloss glosses. I find them to be sticky and I also don't like the sort of mentholated situation. Um, I have this lipstick from Romand. I'm just, it's like a red, I'm not gonna use it. And then I got this thing, which I'll have to toss out because I put it directly on my lips. But I just wanna tell you guys, <laughs> It's not worth the money. It is the Lip Liner Stain. And essentially, it is a stain that you only line your, do the outer line with your lips, you wait for it to dry, and then you peel it off. 
It is a pain in the ass to peel off. It barely leaves any color behind and it's not worth the trouble. This is stupid. So that's all the lip stuff I'm getting rid of. Um, let me put this stuff back in the bag and then we will talk about blush, bronzers, and highlighters. Okay, so I have two of the Benefit box blushes and I got them not too long ago. Dandelion is just not a good tone for me and it's very pale. Um, I believe that they've changed the color since they originally had Dandelion because this looks nothing like the original that I used to have. And then also the shade Sunny. This is a bit orange. I have another shade because I kept two of the four shades that I got. I have another shade, uh, I think it's called Shelly, that just looks so much better, so I'm gonna pass that on. So I'm gonna get rid of both of these Bare Minerals bronzers. This bronzer has been discontinued. It's actually a really great bronzer. I'm keeping one. I had two Fair to Light and I had this one as a backup, so I'm gonna go ahead and pass it on to somebody. Um, I'm just not gonna be able to get through it before it goes bad. Like, I don't know why I thought I needed to buy a backup of that bronzer. But then also, this is the slightly deeper shade in medium, and I used it a few times, and I just found it to be too deep for my skin tone, and the fair to light shade was perfectly fine. I don't know why I decided to buy a deeper shade for summer, because if I'm already bronzed and I already have sun in the summer, why do I need to add more? <laughs> Usually at that point, I'm trying to brighten my complexion a little bit. So that goes into this because this is the deeper shade that I had from Beauty Pie in their bronzer. And this also leans a little bit orange. Um, what is this shade? This is in the shade Goldie Lux. I have another shade that's uh, lighter and a little bit more cooler and it looks better on my complexion. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass that on. Um, I have a lot of these Cover Effects blushes. And this is the only one that I felt like I could get rid of just because I knew I wasn't going to use this shade as much. And this is Pink Dahlia. I actually really like these blushes. I think they're beautiful, but I just wasn't using this one. Um, I have this from MAC. This is the Matte Light Golden Skin Finish. Again, it's a very orangey kind of bronze situation. So I'm just not into it. I have this from Too Faced and it's just the natural chocolate. I have the light chocolate um, or what is it milk chocolate and I'm going to use that one. This smells really good though but look I've only like dipped my brush into it like once so hopefully somebody else wants that. Um, I have some older things in here that just need to go because they're old. This is Revlon Skin Lights and it's like a glowy sort of bronzer. I've had this for probably five years, so that just needs to go. And then this from NARS, it's the original Laguna. And I have a little hard pan from one time when I tried to sanitize it. Um, and again, this is just old, it needs to go. Um, this is another one of those where I have the lighter shade and I love the lighter shade, so I'm like, let me try a deeper shade. And it didn't work out for me. This is the Ulta Faux Glow. I really love the texture of this bronzer, and again, I have the lighter shade. Beautiful, I just won't use this deeper shade. Um, I have this from Dior, this is a highlighter. I already got rid of the lighter one in the shade 00. This is 01 Nude Glow. Um, it's just too ambery, like deep for me. I wish they had a mixture between the 00 and then this shade that had no glitter in it. The reason I got rid of the 00, it was a pretty pearl, but it had glitter in it and um, I don't like glitter on my skin. This is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. A lot of people seem to like this one. I found the formula to be kind of creamy and a bit heavy on the skin. I don't know if you can see like how, oh, come on, hand, okay see how like thick and there's like coverage with it and I don't like a ton of coverage with my highlight. It's pretty but it's it's just heavy um, so I'm not going to use it. Um, I do have a blush bronzer highlighter palette in here. This is the Smashbox Cali Contour. I used it once, didn't like the look. I felt like my skin needed to be brightened a little bit. And it could be maybe because I used it when my skin was already had a little bit of sun. You know what? Do I want to try to use this again in the winter? No, because if I, then this highlight shade is going to be way too dark. I mean, I could use it as an eyeshadow though. You know what? No, I'm passing that on. 
All right, um, I have some MAC blushes in here. Okay, I have the shade Lovejoy. It's very pretty, just too deep for me. I don't know what I was thinking. I have That's Peachy. This just leans too orange. I need to have a little bit of pink. It needs to kind of go coral to be brightening and not just look like straight up orange on my cheeks. Um, this is Sun Basque. And again, just too deep. Um, I have this from Persona and it's the shade Terracotta. And again, it's just kind of like an orangey kind of blush, it, but it doesn't flush or blush my skin. It's, the color's just not quite right for that for me. Um, I have some of these kind of like cream bronzer blush situations in here. So I have this from Milani. It's their Cheek Kiss Rose Romance. Never reach for it. Um, this e.l.f. Halo Glow. I have the blush and the bronzer. I got it because I was going to do a video comparing like all of these sorts of like bronzery wand products together. These dry really quickly and kind of set on the skin, and they, but they sit on top of the skin. Um, and they can get a little bit patchy if you don't work quickly or if you don't have like a very emollient base underneath. And they were just too fussy, so I'm getting rid of them. Um, this from Laura Mercier, if I have a, an emollient base underneath, this actually can be gorgeous. I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to keep it because it does look beautiful if like I have an emollient base. Um, and I stipple instead of like blend, but I just felt like um, it's again too finicky. That's too many factors that I have to make sure are together for this to look good. Whereas then I have other stuff that I can just swipe on my face and blend and go. Um, and then this right here from Beauty Pie is kind of their version of the Charlotte Tilbury. This shade's just too dark for me. It's the shade medium. And you can see a theme here. The medium bronzers, I think, do not look good on me. Um, this is from Say, and this is their high glow, I guess, highlighter. This is in the shade Reformation Rose. And it's like a sort of pinky mauve tone with some gold shimmer in it. And it's just too deep to be a highlighter for me. And because it's that mauve tone, um, it makes my face look dull. It's just not a good look. I got rid of quite a bit of my nude sticks blushes just because I didn't find these shades to be flattering. I ended up keeping two shades um, and the rest I'm getting rid of. And you're going to see when we get to the eyeshadows as well, I'm just getting rid of nude sticks stuff for the most part. There are a few things that I'm keeping, but that brand I think is just not for me. And then I am getting rid of one of my M Cosmetics serum blushes. This is an Autumn Sky. It's just too russety for me. I'll do like a little speck here. It just looks dull on my skin. It's just too russety. There's not anything much there to brighten the skin. Um, and then same thing with this. It's the shade Fox in the Merit Blush Balm things. Um, this shade also just kind of drags down my complexion. And then I am getting rid of this Clinique highlighter in Gold Pop Celebration. Just, it's gold. It doesn't look good on my skin. All right, so the last category of things I'm getting rid of are for eyes. And I actually want to show you a few things first that I had put in my declutter bin. I even told people I was decluttering them. And then I started thinking about it. I'm like, maybe I should do a video using them and just see just double check and that's only because they're so expensive <laughs> that I feel like a crazy person for getting rid of them. So the first two may or may not be a shocker. They're these um, Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palettes. I have Cinnabar and I have um, the Vega palette and the reason I'm getting rid of these is because I have not reached for them since I've done that video. Also I don't wear like super like saturated pigmented eyeshadows. I typically like something that just plays a little bit off of my skin tone that doesn't look like a lot. And these are very pigmented. While you can build them up, 
I also feel like the tones aren't quite right. I, I wish that she just had some desaturated uh, in these formula, just like everyday wash of color. And there's like this one right here probably could be an everyday wash of color or even possibly a little bit of this gray. But I don't want to take them out of the palettes to be used individually. And then also, if you saw, I did do a video when I tried these out, actually before I got them, I tried to dupe them based off of the swatches online and I did an entire video recreating the looks that she did in her um, videos when she first came out with these. And I mean, I have these same shades and other palettes. So I feel pretty good about getting rid of those. And now these two, the tones I think are not quite right for me. They're from Chanel. And this is from the Le Beige's line. And so this is medium. And online when I went to buy it, it did not look like, that is like a sort of mauvey purple kind of color. And it didn't look like that. These shades looked completely different. And then the same thing with this one. This is the shade Warm, where this Lee like leans a little bit more like pinky, coral, orangey. Um, which it is a warm palette, but again, it just looked different online. So um, I don't know if I should do a couple videos on those before I decide to fully declutter. And then also this might be shocking because this is the new Dior Quint that they just came out with. And um, they completely changed the packaging, which they've cheapened the packaging. And they've also completely changed the formula, which also is more powdery um, and it doesn't, blend as well. It doesn't meld with the skin like the old formula. Very disappointing. So I thought maybe I should also do a video with this before I fully declutter it, but I, I got it. I swatched it, used it on my eyes once, and I was like, these are not for me. <laughs> so um, those I might be decluttering, but maybe I'm, I'm probably decluttering them, but I need to do a video first because I haven't really done videos on things. All right, and then speaking of nude sticks, I am getting rid, actually this isn't nude sticks, and this isn't, I'm getting rid of all of these. I had gotten rid of like a bunch in a previous declutter video that I did, and I only kept the neutral shades, and then I didn't really use them, and when I did use them, I was also always disappointed because they crease and they leave my eyelids feeling sticky, so it's just time to get rid of them. I'm also getting rid of this from Maybelline. It's the color tattoo. Again, it makes my eyelids feel sticky. And then this is the double act from Ico. And it's got like a bronzy and then like a deep kind of cocoa side. And the thing with this is the formula is nice, but I never do my eyes that deep. These are very deep colors. I'm getting rid of these little Dear Dahlia um, eyeshadow palettes. So this one comes with these eyeshadows, which actually, these shades are good for me. Um, I just never reach for this. It's so small, like I haven't reached for it in months, actually probably a year, so I need to get rid of it. And then this one has a blush in one side and then two deeper shades. Again, I never reach for that. Um, this Laura Mercier Trio, it's the shade Fresco Ginger and Warm Sands. The tone in this one is okay for me, but the tone in these two aren't, and so I'm just gonna get rid of the whole trio. Um, I made my own Makeup Forever. I It was like a six pan, um, and then I had also purchased I think, something else where I had a four pan palette too. So I removed the two that I wanted to keep and then made the little four pan here. Um, because I don't use any of these shades. Also this, I like the tones, I just never reach for this. So I'm gonna pass that on. Um, I have this MAC, what is this one? The Semi Sweet Times Nine. The only one I really reach for in here is this kind of mustardy, kind of yellow color here. And um, that's not enough to keep this whole palette. I'm getting rid of this Natasha Denona. Um, I hardly ever reach for it. And then I'm just getting so frustrated with these small Natasha Denona palettes. I don't know if you can see this, but these clear plastic lids do not stay attached. 
and it drives me insane. I don't enjoy using it when you, I mean, $25 isn't cheap, but I mean, that is her cheaper palettes. But like when you spend that much on eyeshadow and the eyeshadow does not outlast the packaging, it's annoying. And it would be okay if like, maybe she made those magnetizable like she does the other palettes, but she doesn't. So what am I supposed to do with that? And then NARS eyeshadows are just too pigmented for me. Um, so, or at least the tones and stuff that they put together again, too saturated. Like this is just a lot. This would make a very like warm smoky eye and I'm not gonna go that direction. This is in the sh uh, shade Copper. And then also this little palette is in Summer Solstice. Very pretty shades, but lots of glitter, which I don't go for. And honestly, the only two shades I would probably use, these two right here, um, not enough to keep a whole palette. Very pretty though, but I would like to give it away while it's like still pristine to somebody else that can use it. And then same reason I'm getting rid of this because of the glitter. It's this Bobbi Brown shade. Um, what is this? It's an incandescent. Very pretty. It goes from pink to gold. So I'm going to go ahead and pass that on. And that is everything I am getting rid of. So I hope you enjoyed the video. And I am going to be, I think that decluttering, while it can be somewhat wasteful, other people are getting to enjoy these products. But also I think it is helping me to determine what I actually will use and what I won't use. So then when I go to buy stuff, I'm clearly not going to be buying glitters, <laughs> anything with glitter in it. I'm not like super saturated color eyeshadow is not going to be buying that now. Um, yeah. So essentially just anything that's too much color or too much glitter, I'm not going to be buying. Okay, so first I just want to show you the new items that I purchased and I want to try. I did film a haul video and I will have that linked up here for you if you were curious, but which I don't know what's going up first. I'm assuming that will go up first though. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you really quickly what I'm going to be focusing on this month and trying out. And let me know if you want to see a designated video on any of these items. So the first thing is this Patrick Ta Major Dimension 3 eyeshadow palette. I bought the first one. And then the second one I skipped because the tones weren't for me. And then this one is all matte. And I feel like it's like a great sort of basic palette. And I was also considering maybe doing a video where I compare all of my like, you know, palettes like this, because I also have the, the Makeup by Mario one that's very similar. Um, just like those sorts of neutral eyeshadow palettes, maybe doing a comparison. But then also this came out and I was very intrigued by it. This is from Danessa Myricks. And this is the Groundwork Defining Neutrals palette. And the cool thing about this palette is it has like a sort of like, uh, I don't want to say putty, but it's like a cream to powder sort of finish here and then a powder that you can put over it. You can use this on your eyes, your lips, your face, like anywhere on your face, I guess. I don't know that I would use it like anywhere, but I would probably maybe use it in my brows um, and like as eyeshadow. So we'll kind of play around with that and see what I think. Um, I was hoping that this kind of softer formula would be similar to like Tom Ford has like some kind of like putty shades. I forget what they call them. And then also so does Natasha Denona and even Lisa Eldridge have um, shades with that kind of formula. And I tend to like them because I can get kind of like a very soft blown out effect with them. So I'm hoping that they wear very well. Um, so then the other new thing is this from Hourglass. And this is the, I got the Jellyfish palette because it was the lighter one. And so I'm going to be testing that out this month. And then the last new thing, actually it's not the last new thing. The second to last new thing that I got is this from Lancome. And I just kind of want to play around with that and see what I think. I know already just by looking at it that I'm going to love that highlighter, but the rest I'm not so sure about. And then the last new item I got is from Chanel and it's the single uh, loose shadow and it kind of comes like this, but I don't, is this too much of a mess? Because like you kind of put it on, 
I don't know, the shade is beautiful. I just, not sure I like, do I need to shake it to get it on the thing? Yeah, I bet that's what it was. Yeah, and then it's, you still put it on, but then you have to blend it, obviously, with a brush. I'm not sure how I feel about that. The color, though, is very pretty. So we're going to play around with that and see what we think. Um, so then the rest of these are items that I am debating on getting rid of. And there's quite a bit of Chanel in here, actually quite a bit of expensive makeup. The first one is actually an item I love, but I just get so annoyed with the packaging. So it's a Patrick Ta, and anything that has like these sorts of like clear lids in them, they always break off. And so I have mine held together with scotch tape. There's a hair in it. Um, and it just gets on my nerves. <laughs> so you can buy these blushes all individually, but they also have like that kind of top on it. So maybe I can just get over the fact that I'm holding this over the cream with scotch tape. Um, but this is something I'm just going to play around with this month. Um, also, Hourglass, came, like they came out with this, then they discontinued it. People were complaining. They came back with it. I bought it. And I just, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. I've used it a couple of times. And I, it, I don't think it does for me what it does for the people that were sad that it left. And then also, I don't know. I didn't find the formula to be that good. Is this different from the original? Like, I don't know. All right. And then I have quite a few Chanel items here. Um, I have a blush that came out with the Mediterranean. I believe this came out with the Mediterranean. Um, collection and as soon as I got it every time I went to use it, it, it you can see it's like developed hard pan and also the color is like very orange so I don't know if this is flattering on me if I need to just kind of like clean it up and get rid of it and then I have these from Chanel and this formula first of all it reminds me of there's like a cover girl formula flower beauty has the same formula in their um, like their blush bronzer things. Um, it's, it's a very thin sort of like silky formula that's very beautiful and blendable. But the shades in here look nothing like what they looked like online for the pictures. Um, so I have, what, I think medium and warm. Yeah. I also have another one. Maybe I should pull it out too. Um... Yeah, I have this one in Intense. Oops, and I feel like these tones are more up my alley, but maybe also a little bit too deep for me. So I will pull this out too, and maybe I'll kind of mix around and see if I can get a, a look out of them, maybe combined or individually. But the thing is, I spent so much money on these, and you would expect, I don't know, the quality to be better, the shades to actually match online. Um, I don't know. So... That's kind of like, <laughs> I'm annoyed at myself for buying this. Um, and then I have this from Dior. And this is a new palette. It's in the shade Amber Pearl. They changed their formula. This, it, the formula before used to be almost like creamy. And I remember a long time ago, Lisa Eldridge talking about the Dior formula and how it's got more fat in it. Um, and that, that way it was like able to like sheer out and it was like a beautiful shadow. But I do know, and maybe it wasn't fat, maybe it was like oils, I don't know. But I do know that this is not like that formula. This is kind of like almost chalky and like crumbly. Um, there's a lot of kick up when I go into the pan, which wasn't there before. They don't look bad on my fingers, but like they don't look, this does not look, you can even see there. This does not look like a 60 plus dollar eyeshadow palette. Um, the formula just is not as good. So I don't know why they changed it, but I'm gonna play around with it, see what I think. Um, but I'm just not impressed with the new formula. Also the packaging is cheaper. Um, it used to have like a little thing you would push on and open and then now it's just a plasticky like sort of like snapshot it just feels cheap they did not lower the price though but it just feels cheap so that's very disappointing and then I did decide to get rid of like I have two of the Lisa Eldridge um, 
palettes and I just showed you in the declutter I think maybe I mentioned it in the declutter that I was just gonna get rid of both of them and then I started thinking and I was like you know what maybe I should pull out the shades that I think I may use and try to use that as a palette and then if I still feel like I won't use it then get rid of it so I pulled these shades and kind of made my own palette and it's like a mix of the cool and the warm because again anything too cool isn't flattering on me anything too warm isn't but mixing them together sometimes I can get beautiful looks so I just made myself a little palette out of both and so this is like a mixture between the Vega and the Cinnabon palette is it Cinnabon or Cinnabar Cinnabar <laughs> um yeah and then these are the ones that I ended up not feeling drawn to but still that looks like a beautiful palette so even if I were to give this to somebody I think they would be happy with it and then I do have a Chanel blush here um it is like a stick form blush again I bought it online the color didn't look quite this deep but since this and also the formula of this it, it's like a creamy almost silicone sort of formula and I think it's going to sheer out but, but yeah that I don't know Hopefully I can use it and it shears out and it looks a little bit better on the skin. If not, I'm going to pass it on to somebody who might actually get use out of it because this is expensive. It shouldn't just like rot in my drawer. So anyway, that is everything that I'm going to be testing this month. I did go a little bit light. I didn't add any foundations in there or anything like that because I really wanted to focus on these. And I found that if I add too many products that I don't get around to any of them. So I thought this would be a nice amount of things and also a lot of things I can focus on and do videos with. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what your thoughts are down below and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye. So here's a reminder to look at life that's pouring into you. And so my friend, let me tell you once again and you know that it's true.